I'm probably gonna get cancelled for this, but I enjoyed the time I took to rewrite these two characters. So let's do it. This video is going to be different, as I'm going to be covering two characters at the same time. First will be Snapdragon, because he deserved better. And considering the fact that he seemed to have the most interesting development in the show, but unfortunately it gets weighed down by... Well, there were script problems from day one. Didn't seem like anybody even read the script. That was the problem. Yeah. The second character will be Cal, because... I am getting sick of seeing straight men being depicted as punching bags for feminists with daddy issues. No, that's not a hot take. Anyways, I wanted to rewrite Snap and Cal because we need compelling male characters who are not afraid to be masculine and have agency. And just for the record, I have never found masculine characters to be harmful or toxic. Unless that character was a villain or just badly written. But with that said, I really do enjoy these videos, and I'm proud to be a dork in that regard. And in all honesty, I really did enjoy watching the blossoming friendship between him and Amaryllis, but sadly I felt the dynamic needed a little bit more screen time, as their moment towards the end of the season just kind of came off as abrupt. But that's just me being picky. So... Let's craft a better story for Snapdragon and Cal. Alright, let's get to work. In my version, Snapdragon is going to Highguardian Academy because he wants to be a warrior like his father. But the reason why he wants to take up the mantle is because at home he has witnessed Hathorn, aka his father, be reckless on the battlefield. So reckless! that it almost gets him killed, and Snap is tired of seeing this. Therefore, Snapdragon will do everything in his training and education to avoid being a reckless barbarian. At school, he will take up ballet and focus on being a skilled swordsman. Because, yes, men can benefit from ballet while still being masculine. Tangent aside, Snap will slowly develop into a warrior who is tactful, patient, and incredibly focused. And if you want a visual representation of what I'm talking about, here's a clip from Vampire Hunter D. And in all honesty, I can picture Snap being a master of spells that can enhance physical attacks and abilities, such as using a spell that allows the user to jump to extreme heights, enhance their reflexes to dodge or parry at faster speeds, and who knows? Snap could share these spells with his teammates, like Amaryllis. I'm sure she would like to smash a couple of bad guys with her weapon. His Terrasphere would probably be a ring that fits on his finger and would transform into a standard sized wand, rapier, or medium sized sword. Snapdragon's story will be kept simple, in the sense that he is born to a mother and father with older brothers who would rather explore or fight in competitions while Hawthorne will act like a traditional bounty hunter slash monster hunter, who is built like a tank and uses only physical weapons. But a year before Snapdragon is to enroll at High Guardian Academy, his mother will be stricken by an illness and sadly pass away, leaving a giant hole in Hawthorne's heart because she is what kept the family together. So as a consequence, Hawthorne will not take time to mourn and just bury his grief under the need to provide for his family. As a result, Hawthorne will get more reckless and take up more dangerous bounties that should require two or more people at his side. And Snap will witness his father coming home with lethal injuries and the fear of losing his father grows even bigger. So the first season could be Snapdragon coming to terms with the impact his mother's death left on the family. And eventually during the later seasons, Snap perfects his skills to the point where he becomes overconfident and plans to drop out of the academy so that he can go back home and start bounty hunting in his father's place. But it will be Amaryllis who gives Snap a reality check, warning him that if he tries to leave or cut corners in his training or education, then he will be following in the same reckless path as his father. On a side note, I would keep the scene between Rosemary and Snap on the first day of school. 
as it perfectly highlights that Snap is there to become the most proficient guardian and will not tolerate any form of distractions, especially when it comes to learning. And maybe further down the line, there could be an episode where Snap finally confronts his father in a mature manner, finally airing out his grievances and confessing to Hawthorne that he doesn't want to lose him. Because deep down, Snap loves his family and does not want to see them become divided. And perhaps the two could properly mourn their loss and become a stronger family. That would be a family drama worth watching. Alright, let's move on to Cal. In all honesty, I really do believe Cal only exists in the show to be a punching bag for the writers. And to be fair, this is not unheard of considering that there are plenty of characters in media who do get kicked around by the writers. Want an example? Well, there's Kirk and Milhouse Van Houten from The Simpsons, Zoidberg from Futurama, George from Seinfeld, Ross from Friends, and Chris from Everybody Hates Chris, just to name a few. But what makes these guys more enjoyable to watch? Well, they either learn a lesson, or they make the audience laugh. But usually, I find that the best punching bag characters are the ones who can roll with the punches while still managing to save the day. The reason why your parents and grandparents tuned into Seinfeld every week was probably to laugh at the crazy antics that George would constantly get himself into. It was funny to see this cheap, wretched, big-mouthed man get his comeuppance, because he was the one instigating his own misery. Festivus for the rest of us, am I right? That's why it worked in Seinfeld and not here in High Guardian Spice with Cal and Aster. And it has been pointed out that Cal and any other traditional male in this show are written to deliberately be kicked around by feminists who think men should worship them, which is one of the most narcissistic traits that plague humanity, and it needs to stop. But to get back to the topic at hand, in my version, Cal is going to be assertive, outspoken, proud, and maybe a little reserved. But most importantly, he's going to be insightful and skilled at casual conversation. I really do like characters who are smooth talkers and treat it like a game. Not every character has to shove a weapon in somebody's face in order to get answers. Sometimes having a silver tongue is enough. Why do you think Spike and Faye Valentine are the greatest characters to watch when it comes to Cowboy Bebop? And if done correctly, Cal could be the type of guy that you send into a pub and casually seek out information. The guy could probably do it with no questions asked. Of course, like other characters, he will use physical weapons if in a pinch, and I could definitely picture him using spells to block both magical and physical attacks. In fact, the more I think about it, wouldn't it be fun if both Cal and Snap could team up together to use disguise spells in order to collect bounties? Maybe have an episode with those two partnered up, only using their wits and their brains, no weapons, maybe against a horde full of trolls? Who would not want to see that? But speaking of the topic of magic, Cal of course would be a magic user. And I would have his specialty be casting spells related to illusions or glamouring. On top of that, he could perform basic summoning spells or cast a protective shield if needed. He, of course, will also have a terror sphere that transforms between being a metal cuff and a short staff and a spear. Overall, I see Cal being the type of guy you have on your team in case you need another guy to deliver the final blow to the enemy or shield others. Alright, let's see if we can come up with a backstory for our boy Cal. Did you know that Cal has so little character that at first this kind of was a challenge? However, I started small. So from what I could kind of tell from the little hints I guess that were dropped in the show, I'm going to guess that Cal is possibly an only child like Sage, Time, and Amaryllis. I would still have Cal and Parnell be cousins, but Parnell is going to be that type of cousin who doesn't stop talking and blabs about everything. I'm sure we all had a little cousin or sibling who was like this. So maybe when Cal and Parnell were younger, Cal told Parnell an embarrassing secret and he ended up blabbing it to the whole community. That resulted in Cal being ridiculed by the other kids in the area and he got tired of being teased by everyone thus resulting in him becoming withdrawn, sarcastic, and not afraid to hurl insults back at others. So then when Cal gets ridiculed or mocked, he just shuts it out and moves on. In fact, that could also be his motivation for why Cal wants to roll at High Guardian Academy. 
He wants to make a fresh start for himself and find a purpose that makes him happy. Because I can only assume that Cal was either going to be forgotten or mindlessly beaten up in season two. Whenever that's coming out. And there you have it. We have new outcomes for both Snapdragon and Cal. This turned out to be more fun than I expected. Maybe I'll look into some other characters, as that brings us to the end of this video. What High Guardian Spice characters do you want to see succeed? What are your thoughts? What are your ideas? Feel free to share them. Again, I apologize for not uploading for over a month, but I have been using my spare time to write and edit more scripts. There are topics I've wanted to talk about for years, so let's see how that turns out. Anyways, thank you to all of those who have subscribed, and as always, I'll see you next time.